Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So how do you feel about XRP now? This coming from XRP Crypto Wolf, just kind of gauging the sentiment of the market. James Rule XRP saying, you know, he's still got diamond hands. A lot of people in this thread, you know, still bullish. It's kind of interesting to see uh, though that, you know, the market sentiment has shifted quite a bit. People are getting very, very impatient right now. XRP Crypto B saying, I'm good. Uh, John John saying, more bullish than ever. I firmly believe price will continue to not reflect true value until the flip is switched. Of course, he means switch is flipped. And I sense we're getting ever so close, sometime between 2022 and 2025. Uh, James down here saying, same as I did in 2013. This last battle with the SEC is the last challenge in our way. Before anything new can be established, one has to go through a period like this. Because existing people in old system doesn't want the new system to replace it, because the old system is a cash cow for them. Uh, and then some people just kind of bearish right now. Rex RP saying, you know, I kind of hate this right now. So some people, you know, still staying bullish. Uh, of course, there are a lot of bearish people in the space. I have a feeling that if you're the type of person that is bullish on uh, cryptocurrency, XRP in particular, you are more likely to probably respond to a tweet thread like this. If you are bearish, you probably don't even want to log on to Twitter right now. So Tiffany Hayden right now with this meme, first time friend, you know, this is the reality of the crypto space. And I know I was saying XRP needed to stay above 80 cents in order to maintain that critical support that uh, turned to support from resistance from all those years ago. And uh, you know, 79 cents right now, we are hovering right here. This blue line represents 80 cents. And uh, I'm gonna zoom in there, see if I can punch in and post. There you go. I'm zoomed in here and you guys can see how close we are. Those days, this is on the daily how close we are to days closing above 80 cents uh, or just below 80 cents. So we are really kind of teetering on that line very, very closely. And just to reiterate, I'm gonna zoom out here on the chart. So this is still XRP on the daily, but zoomed out. Just to reiterate here, this is why we are taking a look at this level because old resistance becomes new support. And we saw it here once in September 18. That was the first time that resistance level was made. Try to get past that in November of 2020, right over here. And then uh, sure enough, this pump group up here didn't quite make it that high, it was only about 75 and a half cents. Uh, nevertheless, finally, by April, we did break past that, making a new high. And so since this has been resistance over the last several years, very hard nut to crack. This is the support level, the closing level that we have to stay above today in order to presume the XRP trend will go higher. But of course, this isn't just about XRP, right? It's about the entire crypto market and Bitcoin right now, just kind of hovering still in that range, 35,700 at the time of this recording. Uh, you know, after this bullish rally up here to about $41,300, uh, Bitcoin did come back down. So again, this is Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, and again, trading right now just above 35,700. So the question is, of course, you guys are asking, how is this all going to play out? Well, market cap is still at 1.5 trillion, not too bad. Bitcoin dominance, 44.8%. So let's just quickly look at Bitcoin dominance here. BTC.D on trading view. When I zoom out here, you guys can see I have uh, old squiggles and arrows and circles here from a former video I did. Uh, Bitcoin dominance still you know, kind of pushing up before that last splash downward. Now, this is what we're assuming is going to happen. Of course, none of us really know for sure. But, you know, history has shown that Bitcoin dominance does try to pull back, uh, but ultimately cannot succeed. Sellers take over, Bitcoin price plunges, that money tends to go into altcoins, and then that's what causes the altcoin rally. So right now we are seeing a bit of a double bottom, but I don't think this Bitcoin trend is going to go higher. Uh, of course, Bitcoin buyers likely getting exhausted. What could happen? In here is that Bitcoin does form that new all-time high. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a horizontal line. Bitcoin does form that new all-time high up here. Uh, so that would bring it back up. The dominance would bring it back up to about 48%. And then from there, cannot break this resistance. And that's when it comes crashing down. Now, again, this could happen quicker or longer. I mean, we don't really know how long this is going to take. But these are some of the things we have to pay attention to. This from Bond Crypt XRP with regards to Bitcoin. So this is an article from an analyst suggesting, you know, Bitcoin is at a major downside risk if the equity market corrects. So this is predicted by, I believe it was, yeah, Willy Wu, the world's largest cryptocurrency. Bitcoin continues to trade sideways after failing to hold above $40,000. Uh, and so it gives some stats there. The Bitcoin indicator and on-chain metrics are dodgy at this point, giving a tough time for analysts. Popular Bitcoin analyst Willy Wu, though, looks at the macro 
macroeconomic situation in order to analyze the situation at hand. Wu predicts that there will still be selling pressure on Bitcoin rather than any bullish momentum over the next week. So still more selling pressure, guys. This is what to expect, at least according to Willy Wu, over the next week. He notes that there's a lot of money currently flowing into the US dollar index. So pay attention to that, which means that money has been moving to safety. Thus, Wu points out that if the equity market corrects further, Bitcoin will also enter a strong price correction. In his recent analysis, this is what he said, my only concern for downside risk is if we get a major correction in equities, which will pull BTC price downward, no matter what the on-chain fundamentals may suggest. Noticing USD strength on the DXY, which suggests some investors moving to safety into USD. So money moving into the USD, coming out of the stock market, and he is suggesting that Bitcoin price is certainly correlated with the stock market. This is the S&P 500 on the daily. And uh, you guys can see on Friday, a bit of a correction there for the S&P 500. Okay, correcting from its high up here uh, of about two and a half, two point four six percent give or take. Okay, that's not a lot. I mean, if you're trading in crypto, that's not a lot. But uh, in stock market terms, that's a significant correction. And so what Wu's suggesting is that, uh, you know, if the stock market moves further down, Bitcoin correlated to the stock market, we could see some more moves to the downside. However, it is looking very bullish for cryptocurrency for many other reasons. So again, a wait and see period. Uh, I don't think that we are going to come out of this anytime soon. We are likely going to move sideways for a while. So this is just a waiting game, guys. I have faith we will see a cryptocurrency bull run continue at some point. I wanted to bring up some news here though from Ripple partner BBVA, this from the Cryptic Poet. So they are opening crypto trading services to private banking clients in Switzerland. BBVA said Friday that six months of testing the service with a selected group of users, it is now making trading available to BBVA Switzerland clients. The entity will not be offering advice on these types of investments, however. Uh, this includes Bitcoin trading and custody services with the aim of extending it to other cryptocurrencies, said the bank. BBVA said the reason why the service will only be available to clients in Switzerland is due to clear regulations and the widespread adoption of digital assets in the region. So some regions already have that clarity. Uh, this just another screen grab here demonstrating BBVA just completed the first real-time implementation of an international money transfer using Ripple's DLT technology. So BBVA, a Ripple client. Guys, I also forgot to mention this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I just wanted to mention this to you guys. I was going to say it at the beginning of the video, but I completely blanked. Thanks so much for reporting this imposter. This Working Money Channel account has now been temporarily restricted. So this is the imposter Working Money Channel underscore account. And you guys can see here, we all did it together. So a round of applause. Thank you guys so much for helping me out with this. Just wanted to let you know that your hard work did not go unnoticed. Rath Economy here posting this SBI Investment FX coin has signed an MOU with Bitstamp in order to contribute to the activities of global companies. So here's some news coming out of Japan, guys. Let me just translate that real quick here. Noticing the signing Memorandum of Understanding or the MOU, we've heard that term before, with FX Coin and Bitstamp Limited. So we are pleased to inform you that FX Coin and Bitstamp have signed an MOU agreement on May 31st for the purpose of mutual international cooperation in the field of crypto assets. So Bitstamp stamp a Ripple liquidity partner, and FX Coin is a uh, project from SBI Group. FX Coin has made various attempts to expand actual demand transactions for crypto assets, such as conducting demonstration experiments of domestic and overseas bond and debt settlement by XRP in cooperation with Sumitomo Corporation, SBI Group, etc. We believe the debt settlement transaction with crypto assets as quoted prices will expand into the activities of companies expanding globally in the future. Under such circumstances, we have signed the Memorandum of Understanding with Bitstamp, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in Europe, in order to contribute to the activities of global companies by deepening mutual cooperation with overseas cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, so it is no surprise to me that these two companies, both connected to Ripple in one way, shape, or form, are now bonding together to make uh, a new project, a new endeavor, work for them. So great news here coming out of other parts of the world. This one coming from Japan. Wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. And another one here real quick from the Wrath of Kahneman Bank. Asia is a known Ripple partner and they connect with Rack Bank. Their 2020 annual report lauds it in two places, noting it runs on Ripple. So if you guys didn't know this already, uh, this is just a quick screen grab here from a Rack Bank report. First time in banking history, Bank Asia has started cross-border remittance operations with Rack Bank. UAE, also known as National Bank of Rack, 
Gas Alkema by using latest blockchain technology powered by Ripple. So uh, great news there. Thought I would mention that real quickly. Uh, and for those of you guys interested in looking at that full PDF, I have it listed here, guys. Quite a lengthy PDF, 38 pages, uh, if you are interested in more of the details. But wanted to thank Wrath of Kahneman for posting that. And some big news for XRP hodlers over the last 24 hours. Getting some people a little miffed, maybe? Highly anticipated airdrop for XRP hodlers may not go as planned, and here's why. So this was posted just this morning by the Daily Hodl. And for those XRP hodlers who've been in the space for the last six months or longer, chances are you knew about the Flare Network's Spark airdrop. And so, you know, for much of last year, we were all kind of anticipating this snapshot, making sure we amalgamated all our XRP into one location for that snapshot to occur, because what we were promised was one-to-one -one FLR per XRP that we held. And we got it. We got even more than one-to-one. -one. So now we're just waiting to receive those FLR Spark tokens. And here's what's going on. So Flare Network's highly anticipated airdrop for XRP hodlers is facing a crucial fork in the road just ahead of the launch. Flare, which plans on distributing billions of Spark tokens to XRP hodlers, is announcing they are rethinking the airdrop due to complication with tax issues. So this was not on the docket for us. However, here's what's happening. Flare's original plan was to send eligible XRP hodlers 15% of their claimable Spark at once and the remaining tokens on a monthly basis completing the distribution in a minimum of 25 months and a maximum of 34 months. In a statement via a blog post, Flare said that the longer term distributions may end up being a tax concern. So first of all, this tax concern is going to differ depending on which country you are from. But in the United States, they were noticing some tax implications that uh, perhaps they didn't think of before. Specifically, there is a concern that due to the Spark token becoming priced subsequent to the launch of Mainnet, that the long-term distribution of 3% per month, but not the initial distribution of 15%, could be considered as income for tax purposes. So reacting to the tax implications, Flare Networks have decided to give XRP hodlers two options. The first option, dubbed Buy Through Burn, is to go ahead with the original plan by giving every eligible user 15% of their claimable Spark tokens and then distributing the remaining 85% in monthly 3% increments. With the Buy Through Burn route, users have the option to burn a portion of their tokens in order to buy the remaining distribution. The second option though, called Distribution Halt, is to give XRP hodlers their first 15% airdrop and then burn the remaining tokens, essentially giving users 100% of the supply after the first airdrop. And so uh, XRP King Dogo the fourth uh, posted a uh, just a succinct tweet here to that regard. So option one is to distribute FLR like it was planned originally. 15% the first month and then every month 3% with the total supply of 100 billion. But the option two is this, burning 85% or 85 billion and distribute that 15% and that's it. So a 15 billion total supply. Interesting. Flare plans on putting the two options to a governance vote and include a draft with the startup's own view and research. And so here's a quote from Flare Network's full governance proposals for these options will be drafted, including our view on the pros and cons and released together with legal memo upon which option one will be based. Uh, options one and two will be based on a super majority requiring at least 66% positive votes to pass and option three retaining the original plan because it is the default setting uh, will be based on a simple majority of over 50 50% to pass. So some people were up in arms, some people not knowing really what to think. Filthy Rich Alpha here saying, you know, I had 155,000 XRP for the Spark Flare Network's airdrop. Not a F will I settle for only 15%, which would be 23,250 Spark. Uh, these twunts can't change the rules a couple of weeks before launch. XRP Rose down here saying, you know, I'm surprised people are even surprised they have. Nothing in life is free. The Optimist here saying, it's not about free Rose. It's about the integrity of the company and its founders. You can't not back down from your commitment and changing things to cater one region neglecting all others. So they had said they were going to do something and now uh, it seems like the Flare Networks is kind of scrambling. If they drop 200 billion FLR instead, would you be richer? 360k FLR to you, asks uh, Antifomo. Santiago Velez saying it's scaled across the board. Do you realize how many significant digits FLR is divisible to? The impact would be immaterial. Of anything, the value density would likely rise with momentum from the burn alone. 
Just another chap down here saying, uh, given general crypto Twitter sentiment, someone needs to make an infographic that could explain this concept to a five-year-old. Like, no jokes. Well, Jungling chimed in here. This is his opinion. I would like to thank Flare Networks based on their hard work. I will be receiving free value and will gladly foot any associated tax bill. What a great problem to have. I hope Flare does their airdrop based around what is best for the network and not individuals' tax planning. He goes on to say, many tax issues associated with the receipt of Flare tokens will not have a concrete answer and are more accurately categorized by aggressive versus conservative reporting of the income to plan around this from the network IVI is a fool's errand it's an individual reporting issue and I agree with that you know everybody is going to have different tax implications and uh, you know we assume everybody's living in the United States that just isn't true either so everybody's going to be different uh, like we have seen with Ripple and the SEC enforcement agencies can be ambiguous and then settle disputes by going to court the IRS uses this method all the time sometimes tax questions are just left unanswered uh, he goes on to say I see one of the options allows for the election of either receiving your FLR free or paying a burn fee to avoid tax. My opinion is that this would fall under constructive receipt and be taxed as free FLR for anyone regardless of which option you choose. To roll out an option like this and even insinuate this will help people avoid taxes is reckless at best and should be avoided. Build the future, leave the individual tax problems to the individual to worry about. And so, you know, I kind of agree with this sentiment. Everybody's going to be in a different situation tax-wise. And so, uh, yes, I urge you all to pay your taxes. Uh, do not try to hide from Uncle Sam. Interesting perspective here from Jungle Inc. Well, guys, we have a solution. Hugo Fillion here uh, tweeting this out. Martin Volk retweeting his tweet. Hugo Fillion is the CEO of Flare, sticking to the original plan. Thank you, Hugo Fillion. So, if you guys wanted closure on this matter, here's what's going to happen. I made a mistake invoking governance over the distribution. I'm canceling the proposals. The distribution will remain 15% and then 3% per month. If tax creates sell pressure, then a governance proposal can be submitted by the community to curtail the distribution. He goes on to say, people who are concerned about tax will be able to opt out of the 3% monthly distributions. Make sure you are aware of your responsibilities to pay tax in each of your countries. So, Hugo Fillion also addressing this. It is not going to be the same tax implications across the board. If you live in the United States, uh, you should abide by what the IRS wants you to do. Agent Smith V3 here saying, worst case scenario, someone in a lower US tax bracket has to pay 10 to 12% if they didn't have money to pay taxes on FLR and had to sell some of their FLR to pay taxes on FLR, they would have to sell one to two months worth of FLR. They'd keep 10 of 12 distributions. Scenario number two, someone in a higher tax bracket of 32 to 37% would surely have enough money to pay taxes on FLR with cash. Even if not, they'd keep eight months and sell four months. And Arturo Pertilla down here chiming in, it is laudable that you have made the difficult decision to get rid of the tax-related complexities and stick with the original plan. Kudos. I would have personally appreciated some feedback on the possibility to distribute the entire supply at launch, but it's up to you now. So sticking with the original plan, for those of you guys who are stressing, perhaps worrying about, uh, you know, is this going to mess things up? Flare Networks, Hugo Fillion, sticking to the plan. The one thing I do urge you to do is find somebody who can do your taxes if you plan on cashing out a cryptocurrency in the year 2021, because next tax season, it's gonna look very interesting for me. I've already warned my accountant about that, but that's just my opinion. I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.